AMT Hurdles 1968 Plymouth Roadrunner coming up next on Monster Hubby's What's in the Box? What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Hello once again model car fans and welcome back to another exciting unboxing video as today we look at AMT Ertl's 1968 Plymouth Roadrunner. Beep beep. This of course is the one that started it all, the Roadrunner craze. Well, I don't know, maybe it did. But at any rate, <laughs> this model kit is of course another one of our old box model kit reviews. And you may wonder why I do all these old box model kit reviews. Well, it's a simple, simple answer. If you find one of these out there in internet land and you want to know what's inside it before you put the money down on it, I'm the guy that gets to show you it. Also, if round two re-releases this thing with brand new artwork and everything else, and you're curious as to what's inside the new release, you get a bit of a sneak preview with the old release and what I'm going to show you about it. So that's why I do these great things. So without further ado, Let's go down to our bench, rip the lid open, and see exactly what's in AMT Ertl's 1968 Plymouth Roadrunner. <laughs> now we wind the clock all the way back to 1968 as we visit our Plymouth dealer, and we get to see the brand new 1968 Plymouth Roadrunner. And this is a very cool kit, came out in 2002 from AMT. Again, another one of these models that was built in that glory day when AMT was competing with the likes of Ravel, Monogram, and Tamiya of Japan to come out with the best types of model kits. As you can see here on the side, this one comes with the Hemi 426 in there. It's a very cool motor and a very cool car. And there it is there, three-quarter front view. Just wind the camera back again so that you can see the ends of the box, which of course the covers. And this, of course, is the time of RC2 Ertl. They, uh, of course, got the molds for this kit a little later on, and they have the box with all sides almost all the same. This, of course, is a skill level 2 kit for ages 10 and up, requires paint and glue. So now we'll just take a look at what's in the lid real quick and have a lot of fun doing that. So I do believe this is one of the model kits that was my wife's and she's working on it. So we've got our instructions here and then the interior, the body, the chassis pan, the hood, <laughs> the big 426 under works here, and then a bunch of this stuff. <laughs> Chris Chrysler had the big unibodies, so there's all the front suspension and everything. I do believe this is a B body for you guys that are Chrysler fanatics. You let me know if I got that right. The interior and whatnot. We've got a chrome. Wow, look at these wheel backs. Those are really deep. There's, uh, of course, the intake underneath the hood. A little thing for the, getting the replica. Some more chrome, the windows, and then in here we've got loose parts that my wife was working on, and tires, and a decal sheet, which I can't seem to grab here. There we go, 68 Roadrunner license plates on that. So we'll take a look at all this in a minute. Let me clear this out of the way, and we'll be right back. And here we have our 1968 Plymouth Roadrunner instructions, which actually fold out into a very big instruction sheet. I do believe the original issue of this kit was in the late 1990s. However, there's the write-up and the history of our Plymouth Roadrunner, which is quite a big history. Then, uh, of course, we have our important instructions using your knives and everything. And a phone number, which I don't think exists anymore for this kit, considering this is pretty old now. <laughs> Alright, so here we have our engine. I'll just zoom in a little bit. You do get some good options on here. You can 
put on the regular stock air cleaner. You've got um, two intake manifolds, the dual quad manifold with the four, four or two four barrels sitting right there. And then you can add on these air filters or velocity stacks. There's also a cross ram dual quad manifold. So you've got the staggered carburetors on there. Then the engine goes in two pieces with a two piece transmission. You have your cylinder heads and valve covers. These are hemispherical heads, of course. The oil pan and hemi orange, the starter, and the manifolds. Then moving over here, we've got the rest of the engine going together with the fan belts and the fan, the alternator, the distributor, and the oil pump, as well as our interior going together, the dashboard, separate side panels, which are always nice, the, uh, fr uh, the bench seat, pardon me, with the front and back, and you also get these headrests you can put on there, and the rear bench seat as well. And then moving over here, panel number four, you get inner fender panels, the front suspension and frame rails, as well as the firewall, subframe rails, <laughs> the brake fluid reservoir and hood springs, optional to have your hood displayed upward. And then we have our engine, radiator hose, radiator wall, a purple horn, of course, as with the Roadrunner, the radiator on there and our battery. And then this panel way over here, we have our chassis, the front cross member, the front axles, and the rear wheel backs with wheel retainers and an anti-sway bar. <sighs> All right, so then we have our chassis going together here with the rear leaf springs, as well as the shocks, the differential in three pieces, and more of the wheel backs with our... Uh, exhaust pipes with mufflers and the drive shaft and then getting into this panel here we've got our hood and our body going together the front grille and the bumper windshield and all the rest and a b-pillar you glue in here too and flipping over to the back I've got to zoom out a little Big panel, big instructions. <laughs> okay, so there's our body going together into the interior and onto our chassis here. And then our tires get pushed on and you have optional wheels here, stock or custom. And then getting into these panels, you've got the tail lights going on as well as tail pipes and the rear bumper. And then we get into our decal placement. So underneath we have the air filter decal, and there's that nice um, for the vents to get our air intake into our air cleaner <laughs> and our carburetor. And then finally we have the bumper stickers and license plate and the optional side decal going on there to complete our GTX, or sorry, our Plymouth Roadrunner. And that is our look at the Plymouth Roadrunner instructions. And now let's take a look at all our plastic components. And here's our 1968 Plymouth Roadrunner body. And as you can tell, there's nice detail work on here. You got your Chrysler door handles and the nice body molding, the nice rear window that they had, pardon me. And then the back end here, there's these little locking tabs for your chassis to fit in. Nice little marker lamps there, or, yeah, little emblems. Little support for the grill, and then the screen here. And I also have the hood, just to show you, there's those side vents. And Plymouth up front. And then there are some mold marks in here, which I have to fix up with your number 16 hobby blade. But then the hood itself fits very nicely into the body. Of course, there's nothing there to support it, but look at the gap on there is non-existent. So again, some very nice work by AMT. Next up, we have our chassis pan, and this is very nicely detailed as well. You can see all the great detailing going into the sides and on the gas tank here, 
and underneath your floor. This of course is unibody, so you've got these subframes in the back, and then they go onto our rocker panels here, and then it will continue with some separate panels up in here. So again, some very nice work by AMT. Oh, and if you turn it over, okay, I thought there was carpet there for a sec, but there's not. There's a bit of mold marks in here, which of course you'll have to clean up and able uh, for you to get the chassis or the has seats interior in there. Oh my goodness. And here we have our interior components, minus the dashboard, of course. There's our interior with the floor pan, and you can see some nice detail in here. The little rubber pads so you don't put your feet through the carpet. There's the back seat and the front bench seat. This piece would have to be glued onto the back of the bench seat. And there's those headrests, our steering wheel, and the inner door panels, which are molded flat so that you can get in all this great detail like the armrest and the window cranks. So I'm going to bring up our interior panel into the camera. There you can see that nice detail on there, nice and crisp. Turning it over, there's an Ertl nameplate in here, which was interesting. The back seat has a bit of uh, pulled stretched fabric to it. There. And then I have the nice detail on the seats themselves. This panel should fit nicely right in here. I got that upside down. There. Just like that. And then it's all going to fit nicely into the interior. Just like this. And like that. Hey, I got this in the right order. <laughs> and then our door panel pieces going in there. Just like so. Nice tight fit. And then we've got our Roadrunner style steering wheel. Very cool steering wheel from Chrysler. So now let's take a look at our other components. And here we have all the components that you would find under the hood. There's our inner wheel aprons, our radiator support, our radiator, the hood hinges, the brake master cylinder, the drive shaft, radiator hoses, a couple of braces, our front axles, the horns, and the special Roadrunner horn. Then we've got our battery and our water for our windshield wipers. And then the firewall and the dashboard, which of course would be in the interior. But look at all this great detail on here. The nice speedometer that was in line, go across. Um, little glove box in there. Look at the detail on the radiator and the firewall and our aprons here. I'm just turning it over. There are some mold marks you'll have to take care of with your number 16 hobby blade. But overall, it looks very nice and clean. And here's our next parts tree with all the wheel backs and the retaining bits to them. And of course, these are really deep dish wheels. If we had the uh, special tires, it came with one of the other Roadrunner kits. There was quite a few of these Roadrunner kits of different styles. This is the intake for underneath the hood. And we've got our rear springs sitting here, as well as some of the engine components. It looks like the starter and the distributor. So again, some very nice detail here. Let's take a look at the front suspension components. And here we are with the front suspension. This is all molded as one piece. Well, we get our frame rails in here. We also get the torsion bar front suspension and the cross member, typical of all Chrysler products. And that would go on top of there a front sway bar, and our exhaust pipes. So again, some very nice detail here. Next up is my favorite parts of all, the chrome. Because in the future, everything is chrome. So we got two trees, which is nice. We have the stock wheels sitting here, as well as some high-performance type mag wheels. The differential cover, chrome one. Side mirrors, alternator, rear view mirror and your choice of shift levers. Then we have the valve covers for the Hemispherical 426, as well as these nice air cleaners and shock absorbers and some other bits. And on this one, we have the front and rear bumper and the grill and these pieces here. Oh, those were the taillights or something to that effect. So again, some nice detail on there. 
clean and crisp. You'll need a little black wash in here for your grill. Nice chrome on it. And then our wheels. Again, the correct style. And all the rest. So again, some very nice chrome work from AMT Ertl. So next up, I thought I'd review two different pieces in here. We have, of course, our glass. And you get the side windows, which extend all the way across into the back. And our rear glass and our front windshield. And then here we have the good old Goodyear Polyglass GT tires that have been in the AMT kits for a very, very long time. Usually there's a web in here, but I think maybe my wife cut it out. You can see the raised lighters on here, as well as the traditional old tread. These tires have been around since the 60s and have reappeared in this model kit. So again, pretty cool stuff. All right, so here's our engine and differential and some of the other pieces that my wife was working on. So here we have our exhaust pipes. There's the oil pump and oil filter, as well as the belt and pulleys and the fan. There's our two carburetors. You can get this air cleaner. That's the bottom of the air cleaner, glues on top of there. And then the top of the air cleaner, there's that max wedge type intake manifold. You could, if you want, use this motor in different Plymouths that are out there and uh, have that max wedge in there. There's our transmission, which will fit nicely into the back of the engine. And we also have our rear axle here, which I believe is a Dana one. I'm not too sure, but let's just move this stuff out of the way. There and there and the fan. And I'll just quickly show you the engine. So as you can see, my wife has the exhaust manifolds glued on here as well as the oil pan. It goes together quite nicely. We uh, scraped off the seam lines here. I'm showing her how to do it all a very long time ago. And then we've got a transmission which does have a seam line if you actually look at these things online. And the transmission will go in the motor nice and tight, just like that. So again, a real good testimony to the fit and finish of this era of AMT model kit. Last but not least is our decal sheet. And as you can see here, we have some Roadrunner script with the actual cartoon bird on there from Warner Brothers, as well as the air cleaner and some Nebraska 68 Roadrunner license plates, as well as the I Love Model Cars bumper sticker, and these nice orange and yellow stripes up the side. So let's just take a quick look a little closer into the camera. There, of course, is the bird, and the air cleaner decal, and our 68 Roadrunner from Nebraska, as well as the I Love Model Cars. So, kind of a small decal sheet, but still pretty nice. And that completes our look at the AMT Ertl 1968 Plymouth Roadrunner. Well, I hope you enjoyed that great review of AMT Ertl's 1968 Plymouth Roadrunner, an old box which hopefully we will see a few times again coming out around to with new artwork, new decals, Ooh, and new maybe plastic parts and everything else in there that'll be really awesome. Maybe it'll come out as an 18 in one kit. Wow, that would be amazing. I think the highest I've ever seen is a four-in-one kit. But anyway, who knows? So, good luck finding this out there in Cyberland. And if you like these amazing videos, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all our, your friends and family. Pound that notification bell so that every time I upload a brand new video, you're the first to know it. I have many more coming up. We still got to finish off 1968. 69, 70, and on and on. So there's a lot. And I've gone all the way back the other way to the 1920s. So make sure that you check out all those amazing videos by just going on, of course, our YouTube channel here. Go in my video histories and all that, and you'll find great things like 1930 Packard from Ravel. That's a cool one. So anyway, until next time, happy model building.